Okay. Alright guys, we are going to set the trip meter and trip to zero. Yes, and uh, okay, we got a fuel consumption. We're going to set a zero and our trip meter is on zero kilometers and we are starting off on a run in the Broda Maibi with the new CVT gearbox. Okay, we're gonna do a fuel consumption run first. Let's see how much distance we can go. We'll try to go at least 50 kilometers, yeah? And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the fuel consumption. It will be in kilometers per liter. Right now it's showing 6.5 kilometers per liter because we just started. And uh, I suppose our viewers will want to know what is the fuel consumption for a car with the CVT versus the old gearbox that was a four-speed transmission. Now, it is a known fact that the CVT will give you better fuel consumption because it has got a very high gear ratio, especially in top, and uh, it will try to get up there as quickly as possible, and every chance that it has as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we are right now on the highway, and this is the Putra Jaya Highway and we are going to go a mixture of roads we'll try to do that yeah and see what we get so now we are going at about 90 kilometers per hour that is the speed limit here and at this speed the engine is barely turning over at 1600 rpm you can't see it on the meter sorry uh, because we're concentrating on the center of the console where we can actually see the fuel consumption kilometers per liter oh that's not bad of course we've only gone five kilometers so let's see what other results we can get okay so whilst we are doing the fuel consumption let's just check out the other parts of the car now the new uh, Myvi comes with the full ADAS complement I see we have a blind spot warning. I also see we have lane departure warning and also lane correction. And uh, of course, there is the collision uh, system that with, with autonomous braking, and you can actually set the distance that you want it to start uh, giving you the warning. Of course, I've turned most of the systems off because we are just checking out the car, right? And 
the six airbags. The biggest change to this car is the transmission. So now it has a CVT. I'm not sure how many virtual speeds there are because there's only uh, I can see D down there you have uh, S and B so I don't know what D actually stands for and of course you have the normal park and reverse and neutral then you have D, S and B okay so B must be a lower gear and uh, we'll check that one, one out later and now we are near Denkil and what we are going to do is we're going to take the side road to Salak Tinggi and to Nilai. Yeah, we're going to take the side road to Salak Tinggi and Nilai and uh, we'll be able to check out the car on a mixture of roads at the same time do the fuel consumption. We are doing very well. Uh, the car is sitting on 22.2 kilometers per liter and we are just following the traffic. We are not too ambitious, not trying to overtake because we are going quite slow at what 780, 75, yeah. The meter graduation is 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, yeah, that's about 70 kilometers per hour. And we're going to avoid the flyover, we're going to take the B road to Nilai. So we'll get a bit of winding roads and a mixture of terrain. So we'll get a very good indication of the fuel consumption. Weather is a bit cool today, so we will get better consumption than normal because it's more humid, yeah higher water content, the air charge into the engine is uh, stronger. Okay, we are actually contemplating overtaking this car. Who has come to the right hand lane, I think they want to turn right. They come to the traffic light. Right here, there used to be a estate that we used to go around in the old days. Okay, this road brings back a lot of memories. In the old days, when we used to come from KL to Port Dixon, my hometown, I used to drive around on this road. Okay, that's the engine auto start stop. So we are saving fuel. Yeah, it's got auto start stop. Of course, there is a switch here that will that allows you to turn it off and on we have kept it on so that it works okay so when you take off you can hear the engine start and then we go okay how does the CVT sound okay driven slowly you probably won't know the difference most of the sound you're hearing comes from the tires Tire noise is the main noise that's coming from this car. Oops, the light is just turning orange. Yes, we just made it. Okay, we're going at 80 kilometers per hour, which is uh, the speed limit here, I think. And there's a bit of a drizzle. And I can already tell you that the CVT will mean better fuel economy for all users of this car, for sure. And because the car is light, you won't feel the rubber band effect so much and of course we know where the CVT comes from and that is a pretty good CVT to start off with. And what do we have? 20.3 kilometers per liter. That includes uh, stopping at the traffic light. Of course, we had the auto start stop on. And how does it ride? 
well for small cars like this usually they have the suspension a bit firm why because uh, the weight of this car I estimate maybe about 1,000 kilos and uh, fully laden with five passengers it would be around 1,400-1,500 kilograms in weight so therefore the suspension has to be able to handle at least uh, another 50% uh, increase in load and that is why they always have to start off with a bit harder springs and also uh, stiffer shocks in order for it to be to be able to take that type of shock loading yeah so naturally because the suspension is a bit stiffer this car will handle well oh i can't wait to go up to get big man that would be fun Anyway, Brodo has promised uh, that after this drive, I would be able to take the car one more time and we can give it a check on our favorite mountain road. Uh, right now, we're going at about 90 odd kilometers per hour and we're just driving along uh, like normal, okay? No special effort to save fuel, just uh, no harsh throttling and we have got 19.4 kilometers per liter which is very good uh, it's a little bit more than 5.0 liters per hundred oops there was a truck beside us and he needed to come out so i have to speed up a bit so that he can come out safely Yes, being uh, aware of our surroundings is very important. And also, you shouldn't be parking on the road because you can cause an accident by protruding too much into the road because uh, cars need to use the lane, yeah? Okay, so we are near this uh, junction where we turn right to go towards uh, Ni Lai and Salak Tinggi. So we've used this road many times before on many media drives. And now we are going to turn right. And we have gone 15.8 kilometers and we have 19.4 and there is a red light. So we have to stop. Every time I come here, I am reminded of our rally days and because this road goes to Sepang and Tanamera and that's where a lot of our rally stages were held uh, back in those days but that was a long time ago in the 80s and the 90s and now they're just nice memories guys Okay, so we have a range of 442 kilometers we have a fuel consumption average of 19.6 and we have stopped for a minute and 29, 30 seconds. Yeah, there's a timer when you stop, not bad. So this car has quite a lot of features. Okay, we, I released the brake and the engine started again. And if I brake hard, it will stop. But I just have like half on the brakes. So the engine is just ticking over. put my foot full on the brakes and the engine didn't die off so that means it used up some of the battery to start and now the battery is not strong enough for it to okay green not strong enough for it to switch off and restart again so it's a sort of like a safety feature this guy was coming in very quick just wanted to make sure he doesn't not going to be because the road is wet. Okay, so we are on one of my favorite winding stretches. Used to be quite a desolate place a long time ago, but now traffic uh, tends to be a bit heavier, so we don't use it so often. But this is a good place to check out the car handling at normal speed and it seems to be doing all right 
yeah technically the car hasn't changed very much from the old one because it's still the same McPherson strut and torsion beam arrangement so handling should be about the same and you've seen the old uh, Myvi up on Genting Uh, rumble strips you can feel and we're just following this little kanchil third brake light is working <laughs> you can see his third brake light on the top of the rear screen but his normal brake lights are not working you see that's the third brake light so he seems quite familiar with this road the status report oh 18.8 now and we are in this place called Jindram Ulu and the curvy road has caused a bit in fuel consumption but this is a very good test because then you get to see the actual consumption in the actual real life test yeah save some fuel driving behind him yeah it's getting better 18.9 <laughs> it's a double line so we can't overtake and this is really kampung style driving we are in the kampung This one used to be a transport stage in the early days of rallying. slow car 
well that's good for fuel consumption because these are situations you will meet on a daily basis and we have 19.1 from 18.8 we have improved not bad we've gone 21 kilometers Taking opportunity here, yes, there is. We can take one car. <laughs> 19 point two. Not bad actually if you can have this type of fuel consumption at the current cost of two oh five cents per liter. It's just over 10 cents yeah, per kilometer, which is actually very, very good. is quite good the car is very sure footed yes we are not driving fast but you know that the car handling is good by the way it grips the road yeah and so far this Myvi has performed very well so if you ask me is it easy to drive with a CVT definitely and uh, it's actually smoother because the gears are seamless and uh, they change ratios every other second you know to compensate for the way you drive and so therefore there is no big jump in the gear shift Dropped to 18.6, then he went to 18.8. Oh, the CVT shifts down by itself when you slow down, going downhill. So there must be a slope sensor. Okay, we have a very slow control in front. So 
we've got about 26 kilometers and what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to the highway and uh, do another part of the fuel consumption on highway so you can say that it is a mixture of roads yes just driving it normally like everybody else is I'm using that car in front as a kind of like a yardstick so I'm just following him or her but no we are going a little bit faster so we're going to overtake slowly yes So guys, air conditioner is on. spot warning I can see the warning light so we have 18.7 which is very consistent We've gone 29 kilometers and we have 18.9. That's 18.9 kilometers for every liter, which costs two ringgit and five cents. So you get almost 19 kilometers from the two ringgit and five cents. Not bad. Blind spot warning is telling me there's a car on my right in my blind spot. Yeah, yes, he is there.
we were heading towards the highway we are actually in Nilai Baru <coughs> and we're heading back towards the north-south highway to join the highway and continue our fuel consumption test and the line is red and the progress report is we have gone 31.3 and we have 19.1 kilometers per liter so actually going slow also helps the car because uh, there's less load and of course now the engine is off This traffic light is taking quite a long time. Okay, it's green for going straight. And we start again. traffic light. Yeah, I'm gonna move to the left because we're gonna turn left in a while. <coughs> so it's always good to be in the correct lane for wherever you want to go and do it early so that you can not, you don't be a nuisance to others. I see central locking in the center here. Passenger airbag, aircon, temperature control on the left, fan control on the right, front and rear demister, mm. and there's an off switch. Then there's the external air coming in. Down there you have a cigar lighter, or maybe just, no, it's a blank, not a cigar lighter, it's a power point. Yep, there is also a touch and go card holder but I don't like the touch and go card holder because there are many places where they, they don't have the scanner and you have to actually take out the card it's quite a chore taking it out so I rather have a separate smart tag 6 airbags 1, 2, 3, 4 5, 6, yes Six airbags, a day-night mirror, front recorder. So it's a cool day today, so we can run with the auto start-stop on. And that turns off the engine and traffic lights. Again, 18.8 kilometers per liter. We have a range of 393. Yeah, this is a small fuel tank. Okay, light is green, engine starts, and we go. Okay, for responsiveness, the CVT is always much better uh, compared to an automatic because the automatic has got more slip, whereas the CVT is more direct okay we've got 
132 kilometers, we have 18.6. Signaling left to go to back to the highway, and we're going to join the highway. At 80, we are freewheeling, and the engine is ticking over at 1,500 RPM. Incredible. Okay, we're off again. And we have 80 18.5 kilometers per liter fuel consumption. And we're joining back the JB Malacca Sramban, the North South Highway at Nilai. So we were traveling between uh, 80 to 100, maybe in some places about 60 or 70, and we got 18.4. Now we are going to hit the highway speed. 110 and we're going to try to see whether the fuel consumption will be better or worse okay we'll stay in the second of the four lanes and we'll try to follow the flow of traffic Ten in the rain, and the reading is eighteen point four still. Now we are at about hundred. We are ticking at one at one thousand nine hundred RPM. Yeah, let's see what happens at two thousand RPM. Okay, 2,000 RPM will give us 110 indicated speed, so it's about 55 kilometers per hour for every 1,000 RPM. Not bad. Okay, so guys, 
in a normal four speed gearbox you will be getting something like 40 or 45 kilometers per hour for every 1000 rpm so now at 110 we're going at 2000 rpm in fact we went a little bit above 110 so definitely uh, the engine is turning over slower when you are using the CVT so therefore it's a foregone conclusion CVT is more economical than the four-speed gearbox without a doubt okay let's try to put the theory to the test it's still at 18.5 and we are going at the regulation speed of 110 not bad actually I'm quite impressed so guys this is the typical fuel consumption you will get okay, I exceeded the speed limit a little bit okay we keep it down to below 110 and I'm just going to follow that car in front as a sort of a control yeah okay the car is going a little bit at around a hundred yeah I think maybe we have to overtake him because we're slowly catching him even at a hundred because the return to center is very good and the car is very stable at 90 kilometers per hour well just now at 110 it was also very stable so this is very very good Very, very good. So guys, if 
we are driving at 110 on a steady throttle in the Maivi you are getting 18.5 kilometers per litre very nice lot yeah we have gone 46 kilometers and it dropped to 18.4 okay so it's not 18.5 it's 18.4 <laughs> so we are at One of a kilometer is a hundred meters, just one hundred meters. Okay, one thousand meters is one kilometer, ten times of a hundred meters. Yeah, it's back to eighteen point five. Well, it's between eighteen point four to eighteen point five, lah. And we've done forty-eight kilometers. Oh, that motorbike is running in the wet. He is getting wet. Officially 50 and 18.5 kilometers per liter. All right, guys, that's that concludes our fuel consumption test, and let's go to the next test. Cameras off. <laughs> 